I'm Betsy Kanabi Rowe. I'm the art educator at Sabatini Gallery. And today we are going to work on a Japanese stab binding. And this is um, the directions that I, we are using. And um, this is, a, is from a very helpful book by Alyssa Golden. Um, it is, she has several books, but this is a, a really um, handy book to have. It's called Cover to Cover. So today with the, the Japanese stab binding, um, it was created during the Edo period of Japanese culture. Paper making and book binding both uh, came to us, came to Japan from China. But at this time they were looking for a way to put together printed pages in a, a usable manner. So the beauty of the um, Japanese stab binding is that you can print on uh, one side of the paper, fold it in half, traditionally this is how it's done, and then it's bound on one side. So you get two pages, but um, you don't have to print on both sides, which of course would have been more difficult at that time. We are not folding our pages today, but we are putting a hinge in. So I'm going to go over our tools. And we have, um, of course, we're using a glue stick. Traditionally, we would be using liquid glue. A PVA is preferred and a brush, but this is quick and easy. So we're going to use that. Um, we have book, book board, Davies board. You can see this is quite, quite thick. Um, if you don't have book board at home, you can use chip board like cereal boxes or um, cracker boxes. You just need to put two pieces together, laminate them, glue two pieces together, and that would make about this width. Uh, otherwise, it'll work too much. So chipboard, like paper, does have a grain to it. And the grain um, on this that is going lengthwise. And so what that means, the grain, if you wet it on one side, it'll, it'll curl up. So uh, we have, we're going to cover this chipboard with paper and um, I have uh, kind of a nice medium weight paper and this side, just so I can, we can tell sides, uh, I did a little watercolor um, dribbling on. And we have cut those to size and uh, I will put those in the directions and then we have and all. This all is from Talus Book Binding. I do like this one because it fits nicely in my hand, but any all will work. Um, also, a, a really heavy needle. It's kind of hard to manipulate, but uh, an all would be best. And scissors, a nice, an eye, a needle with a nice big eye to it, heavy. This is linen thread. This is very traditional. It does not have to be linen. You can use um, embroidery floss or a heavy quilting thread. Uh, there's even uh, contemporary artists, of course, push the limits. And there's um, at one in one copy in our um, artist book collection that uses ribbon, thin ribbon, instead of uh, embroidery or uh, any other kind of stitching material. And then since this isn't this linen thread is not waxed. Um, we will wax it, and this is the wax. You can find this in a quilter, quilting department. And the reason you wax linen, this linen, is that it will flow easier through the holes as you're stitching and also um, hold snug. A little bit of wax gives it that little bit of a resist. So we'll cover that when we get to it. A pencil is always handy. And this is just a piece of foam core, something to, st so when you're stabbing your holes, um, you have something to protect your tabletop. You can also drill the holes uh, with a fine drill. Okay, so we're going to start with the, the book board has been cut into two pieces, the same size, and then We cut off an inch piece, and off that piece, we cut 
a quarter, about a quarter of an inch, about three eighths, about three eighths of an inch. So this is gonna be our hinge. So we're going to set that aside and take our full sheet of book board. And uh, you can me measure this, but I'm gonna, eyeball is okay too. I'm gonna eyeball this one and I'm going to draw around lightly with a pencil. And this is going to tell us where we're going to go when, once we have the pieces glued up so we don't um, have to worry about that when we get to that point. Uh, I'm going to do it to both of the covers. So that's ready to go. And I am going to put glue stick put glue stick on the book board. Uh, this is a nice, I like these big glue sticks because they cover fast and easy. And get that all over edges. And then this is where you want to have those lines. It's very handy. You just come in and lay that in. And with glue stick, Rubbing a little pressure and the heat is what makes it stick. Good, it sticks anyway, but it, this it helps it really stick well. So there's one. And the next step, oh, when I talked about the grain of the paper, so we went the opposite, the, the grain on the cardboard is going lengthwise, and the grain on the paper is going um, horizontally, shortwise. So they're opposite, so they pull different ways, so the curl is different. And the next step we're gonna do is trim these corners. I like to leave uh, about a quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch, so we're going to trim it at an angle, but not to the corner. So leave a little space there. Otherwise, your corner sticks out, and we don't want that because that, that uh, allows your book board to be exposed. So we're going to trim those, set those aside. And then we're going to take and glue It doesn't really matter which you do first, um, but I, I like to be consistent if I'm doing, if I'm doing the end, ends, I do both ends first. If I'm doing the sides, I do both sides first. You can hear that on. What I like to do is take and then these little corners, I like to take and press that down. Um, don't push through, don't, I, I kind of use my fingernail, but you can also use a bone folder, which is a handy tool, but don't tear the paper. Because then your, again, your corner will be exposed. So press those in and then glue these sides. So we have a nice wrapped cover. And then we had a small piece of paper the big piece is about an inch overlap of the board. So we have this nice fold. And then the, the um, inside cover, it comes in about 3 eighths to a quarter of an inch. So we, the idea is to cover up the book board. And so we'll add this piece by gluing this paper and 
placing that. And then we have a nice cover that is good to go. We have really have no spine on this book. It's an open spine, um, the stab binding, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, for the hinge side, the front, we will do the same, same process. We'll cover the, the large piece and set it into our pre-drawn square. And then a little more encouragement to stick. And then we'll do the hinge. The Japanese stab binding, well, set the hinge, let me go back. The hinge goes on this side and the main part goes on this side. So you're gonna leave a blank spot in between. That's why you wanna have this paper marked well. The Japanese stab binding is, is meant to, um, it's designed so that it doesn't open flat. Um, it's helpful to protect pages but uh, with this hinge, we'll be able to open it more fully. And that's why I like this hinge. So again, we're gonna cut those corners. And glue those in. And this time with that, um, Space in there, you want to be careful not to push too hard on your paper to tear it, but we'll be protecting it with the second piece of the paper that we'll be adding to the cover. So this. Keeps it, keep, gives your hinge extra support. Support. So this is where you don't want to press in and too hard and um, actually tear that paper. Just be careful, be cognizant of that. That you could, it could happen that way, but we don't want to. And then again, we'll glue. This piece, when using liquid glue, you still want to um, do a nice thin, even layer, but you need to move um, a, little, a little faster, and, but too much glue isn't good. So this completes the front cover, and you can see there's that, kind of see, there's that hinge. And when we you have our book, it'll open nicely. So we are going to get ready to stitch. Um, don't think I'll use that. This book really takes about a yard, which if you remember um, the original yard measurement is nose to length of arm and that works pretty well so this was the un, unwaxed and to wax I'm just going to take and well, I'm going to wax this one in so I can then draw that through and I've got it pressed up against the wax and I draw it through and then uh, you want to use your the warmth of your fingers to, to give that wax, secure that wax to the thread. So it's ready to go. And then we'll get out a needle 
it, to thread a needle, it's really easy, uh, easier if you cut your thread, the end of your thread, even though I know it's not very big, but you can cut it at an angle. And with this wax, you can flatten it a little bit. And then it slides You want to have it an, an even in the needle and no knot. We're going to assemble the book. We we'll put the back cover and then your pages. And the beauty of the, another beauty of the Japanese stab binding, you can put as many pages in as you like. And then the front cover. This one is already pre-punched, but I, you create a template of your holes. I like to clip the book together and then this helps hold it and then with your template, you would mark your holes, your series of holes. And I also like to put a very light mark um, that this is, this is now my, the top of my book. So I know which way I'm going when I'm, because you go back and forth. The most important thing about stitching this book is to, is to start in the middle. Uh, don't start on an end hole. This is like pretty much a running stitch. And so you're, you're going in and out and in and out. And then you're coming back in. And where you've skipped, you come back in and fill that in. So it looks like a continuous stitch um, when you're finished. So we're going to start on the front. And we're going to go through. This is one, two, three holes from the bottom and pull it through until you have about a two inch tail. I put my thumb over that and hold it taut. You want to keep your stitches taut. Now I'm on the back side. I'm going to go around the end. Remember I said there's no spine. This around is really a decorative stitch, but it could be considered a little bit of a way to hold things together on the back in lieu of a spine. So I went around and came back through that same hole. Now we're on the, still on the back. We're going to go up to the next hole. Towards, I'm going towards the top. Go through this hole. I'm on the front. I go around the end, back through the same hole. And line it all up, keep it taut. Okay, now it's a little snug, it's less important to hold on to that tail. So I'm on the front, I'm going towards the top. There's my little arrow if you can see it or not. And I'm going to go to the next hole up. I'm going to repeat this pattern again through to the back, on the back. Come around the end of the book and back through that same hole. And so you can see I'm starting in with this, pull that snug, again, starting in with creating this pattern. But there's also gaps that we're gonna come back in and fill when we go back down. So we're on the back, we're gonna go around the top and go in that same hole, the second hole. I'm going to take this clip off to show you. So it makes a V in this corner. This is a little fancy stitch. You, can, you don't have to put this little hole in the corner. This is the, the fun, decorative look of it. So now we're on the back. We're going to go in that very top hole. So this is a line up from that, on the back, from that second to the top hole to the little one. So there's a little line there. And now we're going to go 
around the back of the book structure and back in that same hole. And now we have a, a little bit of a Y there. We're going to add another tail to that little Y here. We're going to go around the top and back in that same hole. So now we have on the back, we're finished. I mean, there's our decorative look. And on the front, we need to fill this line here. So we're on the front, we'll go in that second hole. And we're going to start going down towards the other end to do the same design. We go from front to back, we're on the back, and we notice there's a, a gap. We're going to fill that in by going in that third hole down. And I now need to, there, I need to pull that up a little more. So you can see that's filled the design. We're on the front. We're going to come down to that next hole. And we've filled in this gap. So now we're going down to this bottom. This is, I'm putting, turn it around, but that's our bottom. Second hole from the bottom, we're going to go in. We're going to go around the end. We're finishing up this design on the side here, around the end, back in that same hole. We're in the front. We're going to go, I'm going to take this, whoo, that's exciting. Take this off and uh, come around the bottom of the book and go back in that same hole. So we've got a, our Y here. We're on the front. We're going to go in that very last hole. This gets us up to that hole to do the around the end end of the book to the back and around from the back to the front. Okay, and now we're on the back. We're going to go in. We have one more space to fill, this little space here. And that second hole from the bottom. And we're ready to tie off. And you see we have this gap, that's where we're going to tie off. And if you recall, I, a square knot is preferred because they hold so well. If you recall, it's left over right and follow through, bring it, bring it through, snug it. And then right over left and follow through and snug it. You can start right over left and follow through and left over right and follow through either way. And then, um, you, this is sort of personal preference. You might have wanted to make it a little longer, but um, if you trim it to about half inch, that's what's known as a bookmaker's tab. So there we have our book. Here's the top and it opens up nicely and you can draw or write whatever you'd like. And so you see that that design on the front is exactly the same as it is on the back. So there you have it, a Japanese stab binding. <laughs>